Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues. And with this video, I'd like to talk about Doctor Who once again, relating to two topics that have been floating around my mind for a little while now, after the name of the Doctor and the day of the Doctor, respectively. Now, one point I'll be getting to in a little while is to say that I think this whole regeneration sort of speculation and debate may actually be a moot point at this point. After I've watched the day of the Doctor for a second time, this occurred to me, and I'll get into that in a minute. Firstly, I want to ask the question of all you guys out there who are my fellow Whovians, how many TARDISes have you seen lately? Now, this was brought up in the Day of the Doctor when we see all 13 Doctors arriving to save Gallifrey. We have Peter Capaldi's debut, and we see his quaff, his eyebrows, his eyes, you know, looking pointedly out at the camera very ominously, and he's flying his own TARDIS. So we know that he has one. Whatever Peter Capaldi's 12th Doctor will amount to being... It's been rife for debate and speculation, especially with the comments made by Stephen Moffat about how Matt Smith's Doctor may be the final 13th physical incarnation of the original Doctor's lifespan, and he will die on Trenzalore. If we go back a little while, I posted a video shortly after the name of the Doctor speculating about the TARDIS tomb and the TARDIS that the 11th Doctor arrived on Trenzalore with. When he crash lands on Trenzalore with, of course, in tow, Jenna Louise Coleman's Clara Oswald, and they meet Alex Kingston's River Song as a sort of spirit. They enter the tomb and all that stuff with Jenny Strax and uh, Madame Vastra and, of course, the Great Intelligence, all of that. We see that when he crash lands on Trenzalore, one of the window panels in his front doors cracks. And if you look at the TARDIS tomb, which is growing exponentially up at the mountaintop on Trenzalore, that TARDIS also features a crack in its window, which is the exact same crack, obviously. When they enter the tomb, and they enter the room with the time scar, it is the 11th Doctor's current TARDIS console room. Sans console, of course, in its place is his time scar, rippling of energy. And I largely speculated, you know, these are all hinting at the fact that this is the 11th Doctor's physical TARDIS, that one way or another my speculation was along the lines of the 11th Doctor may be the physical end of this current Doctor. And it seems to be supported now with those words by Stephen Moffat. Now, of course, we don't know exactly what that's going to translate to, but that would explain why there is a TARDIS tomb on Trenzlore and why the 12th Doctor, whatever he ends up being, whatever he amounts to, has one of his own. Now, how are they going to explain that exactly? Well, I've been thinking about that. And we have to kind of go back to Series 6, I believe, where we might actually find our answer at the very beginning of Series 6 in The Impossible Astronaut. When the future Doctor is going to ultimately his death. He's going to be killed on that beach side or whatever in the desert in Arizona, lakeside, whatever you want to call it, by River Song in a spacesuit. And Amy, Rory, and River herself are going to witness this. Of course, they don't know who the killer is at that point. But when the doctor's waiting for them to arrive, he is Sans Tardis, respectively. And then once the deed has been done, all three of them go back to the diner, and there is the current version of the 11th Doctor. He's just arrived in his own Tardis. So even though at the end of that whole series with the wedding of River Song, we had a sort of timey-wimey implosion of an alternate universe and all that stuff, that says to me there still could be an extra TARDIS floating around out there, which would account for how there are seemingly two, one for Capaldi's next Doctor and one to be a tomb for the last incarnation of the Doctor on Trenzalore. I think it would be a big-time mistake for Moffat not to bury the whole Trenzalore and dying there the fall of the 11th thing. I think there's a reason he's been setting this up, and I think it's to set the series on a whole new course. What that's going to amount to, we'll have to wait and see for Christmas and Series 8, respectively. But I think what it lends toward is, you know, as I say, you have two TARDISes, and that could be how they explain it. Unless they're going to fall back on the Doctor Who mythology that suggests either the, you know, TARDISes were built on Gallifrey, or they were grown, or even cloned, and that kind of thing. That may be how they account for the 12th Doctor, Peter Capaldi's Doctor, having his own and Trenzalore being what it is. I don't think we're going to have to wait another thousand years of the Doctor's life cycle for him to eventually end up there. I don't think it's a fixed point in time to that degree. 
All of that being said, you know, getting back to the regeneration topic, the reason why I put forth that I think this is all rendered moot is because, specifically, of the end of the day of the Doctor and Tom Baker's cameo as the curator. Now, I've seen a lot of people debating the fact as to who the curator is. People have been saying they're very upset by it because it was left sort of, you know, unspecific. We can't really wholeheartedly say this was concretely said that he is the doctor and all this stuff. It was hinted at at best, and people, you know, can't take it or leave it as just being that. They were kind of dismayed by it. And I watched The Day of the Doctor again, and I actually caught a line that I'd missed the first time out very early on into the episode where Queen Elizabeth I has sent a message to the 11th Doctor. It's passed down through the ages, and she says, I have appointed you, air quotes, the doctor, as the curator of the undergallery. After all of that timey-wimey, you know, sort of rambunctious saving of Gallifrey, when the story's finally all said and done, John Hurt's gone on his way, so has David Tennant, and Jenna Coleman has gone back into the TARDIS, Eleven is left to sit there and catch his breath, and he says, you know, maybe that's what I'd like to do. Maybe someday I'd like to retire and be the curator of this place. And then that bombastic, booming voice of Tom Baker. You know, I think you just might, is what he says. And then they go on to talk about how maybe I was you, maybe you were me. Maybe you'll visit those old favorite faces and stuff like that. And I think what we have here, because he is said to be the curator, it's the Doctor. It is a future incarnation of the Doctor, which suggests to me that the Doctor's regeneration cycle, all of this debate that I've even participated in, may be a moot point. Maybe it's just that these regenerations are the biology and the nature of Time Lords in general, and it's really not that big of a deal. I think Doctor Who will always have to be central to the Doctor in one way or another. But at the same time, I think it's sort of a clever answer to all of this debate that we have this curator suggesting that he is a future incarnation. The only person who was appointed curator was the doctor. And he says very playfully, you know, I could be you, you could be me. So I think there is precedence for us to say the doctor's lifespan, how long he's going to be around, isn't the biggest issue in the world, because as long as Doctor Who is around as a series, so will the doctor be. And they'll find reasons around whether he's going to be living or dying and all of that stuff, as is necessary. Maybe the doctor's going to get a new regeneration cycle at Christmas. Maybe he's going to become a new being. Maybe it's going to be something else entirely. But the point is not so much to focus on that as it is for the adventure to continue. It's, I guess, what I'm saying. And I love the fact that we have Tom Baker's curator after hearing that message from Queen Elizabeth that she appointed the doctor as the curator. That almost answers itself right then and there. And, you know, of course, that scarf being on Osgood and everything like that, I mean, all the points are there to suggest that is the case. We saw John Hurt when he basically was regenerated out of the Eighth Doctor in The Night of the Doctor, he was a young man. And then in The Day of the Doctor, he's a very old man. Well, Tom Baker looked very old, and he might have been around for a while if the Doctor regenerated back into that old classic face. I think this is highly intriguing that we have an issue where we can seemingly forget about the importance we, the fans, have been putting on this whole regeneration issue. Because it's not so much a question of how long the Doctor's going to be around for, it's that he's going to be around. And that's all we need to know. We, we just want to experience the adventures of a lifetime through his journeys with his companions as they come and go and everything like that. And I also have to point out as a footnote, going back to the fifth series episode, Vincent and the Doctor, you had Bill Nighy's character, who I forget if he was actually named in the episode or not, but he was a curator of a museum of sorts. And I thought it was very funny how he sort of played off Matt Smith and they were very impressed with each other's bow ties and everything. Maybe he, too, was a curator. Maybe he, too, was another incarnation of a future doctor. And so even though I have been hard on Stephen Muffin in the past, I've come to realize post the day of the doctor that here is a man who appreciates and loves and has grown up with Doctor Who from the classic to the modern, and he's as big a fan of it as I am. And he has created an equilibrium 
and because he's also well aware, as many of us need to be reminded of from time to time, that in 1963, when the show was created, it was created for children. Now, maybe back then it translated to 5- and 10-year-olds. I think today it's more equivalent to teenagers and young adults. But we elder adults also enjoy the series. And when we start picking it apart and picking the man apart and trying to get him ousted because we're not happy with what he's done or hasn't done, I think we're missing the point and that he's been able to marry those two aspects very well in that you see homages clearly to the past all the time. I mean, the Zygons, for crying out loud, no modern viewer is going to know about the Zygons who doesn't care about the classics. Luckily, I had vague familiarity with them, but I was astounded by their appearance. And I'm learning every day, even though I love the classics as much as I do the modern, it's still a learning curve for me. I enjoy seeking out and finding more of classic Doctor Who and stuff that I've never seen before. But at the same time, there are people who are younger, who aren't as familiar with it, who are only just beginning. And those are the people you want to pick up as viewers now. We want the classic fans to stick around too. And I think Moffat has tried to put this forth in a way that both sides can be appeased. And so I think, you know, we're kind of getting stuffed shirted and uh, letting the negativity flow when we're picking things apart and we're not happy with it and this, that, and the other thing. Because I think there's a lacking of objectivity. And I think when we're kind of debating against each other, us versus them, we're missing the point. It's a television show. It's an entertainment program. One that is affirming, one that is dramatic, one that is tear-jerking, one that is freaky and scary. All of these wonderful things, and I only hope that it'll last forever, or at least a very long time, and that it won't have to meet its demise like it did back in the late 80s and everything like that, where we had to wait almost two decades to get more Doctor Who. And so... You know, I just want to sit back and enjoy the show, and I hope everyone else out there will too. And so, yeah, I think the Doctor may be coming on to a whole new chapter of his lifespan. I think we have a possibility in my speculation as to how there could be two TARDISes at least, because Trent's lore, you know, that TARDIS tomb, I think that's something that needs to be dead and buried, no pun intended, because essentially if we leave that hanging, I don't want that to be a fixed point in time that we'll, we're going to be waiting for and debating about, well, when are we going to get back there at some point, you know? I think if this is the incarnation of the Doctor, as we know in the Christmas special, it's rumored that it's taking place on Trenzalore, I think if we bury it now, we won't have to leave it open. We won't have to worry that in a hundred years' time they're going to have to come back to Trenzalore eventually. I think whatever's happening next is awesome, and it's going to be wondrous, and it's going to keep the journey going. And I also think that with the hinting of the curator having been appointed by Queen Elizabeth I and the doctor saying that is something he may eventually desire, and then the curator himself in the form of Tom Baker saying, you know what, you may just do that, I think it answers all questions, and I think it's all rendered moot. All the debating, all the fighting, all the hashing and rehashing, it's just taking away from the adventures of time and space. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you think of all of this sort of long, rambly uh, discussion about Doctor Who and where we're going, where we've been, and everything like that, and all the hints that have been thrown out from the name of the Doctor up through to the 50th. And, yeah, I'll hear from you, and I'll catch you later. Peace.